Well, I'll, I'll just give a little of a preamble here um, to allow people to get back in. I've listened with interest to the, the comments in the, in the rest of the conference, and I've been scribbling down notes. And I'm trying to think about this issue about, inter I'm an architect, so I'm trying to think about how to describe what I do in some economic terms or in some business terms. And unfortunately, Paul Galland, who's the kind of economic engine of this, is not with, not with me today, but, but I'm going to talk a little bit about what he does. Um, I understand some of the same, same things here that have been talked about from a, a kind of different point of view. For instance, place in our field is actually turned into a, a proactive idea about placemaking. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, two concepts that, that we often use in, in our field um, that I think relate to the issue of rural, rural economies. Um, when I'm talking about um, uh, a kind of spatial compression that's, that happens in rural communities and the idea of working vernacular. Um, and also, I, there was a mention earlier on about, about you know, what do you do when there's no theater in town. And I think what I'm going to also show, I think, through this talk is an idea that perhaps low-tech response is, bet, is better than no response. In fact, some ways, many, many ways better than a high-tech response. And low capitalization, like not having a theater, is something that you can actually work with in, uh, in, in uh, different ways. Um, so I'll give the economics up front and go on to speak about the activity that, that I and my students engage in. Um, as, as you've just seen, Nova Scotia has a re uh, regional culture steeped in music and dance. The example of Shetty Camp shows one way that these traditions benefit the economic development of the community in a way that becomes much more intentional, has become much more intentional in the last 10 years. Uh, as seen in the example of Celtic Colors, and in this more local example, uh, Shetty Camp, music and dance is the heart of a rural creative economy. Um, in Shetty Camp, the Arts Council um, has, has um, generated uh, over a thousand shows, musical shows, music, dance, and theater, for a total audience of some 185,000 people, um, which means that there's been a lot of events. Um, the average audience is about 170 people, and we're talking about in 2010, this year, the esti estimated economic impact is 3.3 million and uh, 40 direct jobs this year alone. So if Paul Galland was here, the, um, he would be able to explain the details of the operation. Despite the convincing numbers, I think it's fair to say, he struggles with economic sustainability um, of the Arts Council reductions every year. So though the economic benefit is evident, the economic viability of the cultural production is always at risk. Um, however, creative production is not just a story of community economic development. In Shetty Camp, for instance, it's an important cultural activity. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background about Shetty Camp itself, um, Shetty Camp is a remote French-speaking community of 3,000. Um, it's a kind of one of the main towns of, of Ac uh, Acadian culture in Nova Scotia. Um, it's on the western side of the uh, western entry of the Cabot Trail, Nash the Highlands National Park. And uh, it has about 300,000 people pass through in a, in a two or three month period, very few who stop. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting town, in, in fact, that the only outside economic evidence of outside economic insertion is one Tim Hortons coffee shop. So that's the full extent of their kind of uh, corporate sense. The, the town itself has a kind of amazing culture of cooperatives. So many things are cooperative in the town, the radio station, the golf course. Many of the things that you would unlikely to expect to be cooperative enterprises are in fact cooperatives, just because the people are used to being uh, self-sustaining. Um, the Conseil des Arts has promoted children's theater as a vehicle for reinforcing linguistic and musical heritage. So it's a kind of political activity. Uh, some, some of the work is nostalgic, revising their history and creating an effective voice. So they're actually acting in, a, in quite a, a concerted um, and intentional way. About uh, 10 years ago, they got together and decided 
that theater was an active way of sustaining the French language. And, and they've been very successful in this. So children learn French as an active language, and, they're part, and theatrical education is part of their edu educational uh, activity. It's mostly extracurricular. But it's not hard for this town of 3,000 to round a production, for instance, uh, with 200 people in it. So that's a kind of evidence of what they end up doing in terms of cultural production. And, and in fact, it's a very simple investment of a lot of the people in the local activity and the local culture of the town. Um, a simple and important story which I, of which I'm just simply an observer. However, I think there is more to this situation. The difficulty of music, dance, theater, and festivals in general are that, is that they're ephemeral. Uh, even annual festivals leave little behind except good memories, and they run the risk of lasting as long as the originators can manage to keep the economics afloat and sustain the energy in as sweat equity. So I think that's a kind of something that's come up before in this conference that people recognize. So I don't, I don't, don't propose a solution to this dilemma, but merely a potential reinforcement, a couple of observations that I'll start with. Um, and, and these are kind of observations that are important to me as an architect, and I think that they might have some insight in terms of what rural communities are about. Um, and in small towns, let, let's face it, there might be one building every four or five years. And so this is something that you have to think about as a small town. And uh, every, every new building, if it just meets its purpose, is actually going to be somewhat of a failure. In fact, it has to meet more than its purpose. It has to be many things to many people. Now, that's a really complex thing to ask a town to think about and to, and to try and understand how you build something that is, in fact, just one thing and meets all kind of criteria, but in fact, and act, actually act as many things. So the people in Chetty Camp are good at, good at this. They, are, they have a kind of natural tendency to do these sorts of things. Um, and there must be a slide missing. Um, so they're nat their natural uh, way of doing these things. They've, uh, for instance, they've, they actually made certain that the town didn't tear down its school. There, there's a proposal to build the school, a new school at the edge of town. The, old the, old, the, town, the town school was, in fact, too large for the population of the town. But instead, they insisted on the renovation of the town, and they split the school up into a kind of community center and school at the same time. So in fact, the Arts Council is located in the school itself, and in the process, raised funds, I think about $2 million, to renovate the, the auditorium, the theatrical auditorium in the school, and turn it into a high-class uh, uh, venue for giving theater. Um, another example of that is the fact that the local health club uh, went belly up. So they actually took the equipment from the local health club, moved it into the school, and now the people go into the health club in off school hours, either before and after school, and the school itself gets to use the health club equipment. So they're, they're already a kind of way of working in this town, just because of its location and because of the way it works is that things like this have a kind of multi-use environment. Okay. So, so I think, um, so that's what I'm going to call a kind of idea about spatial compression. There's this idea that, in fact, spaces have to perform multiple uses and multiple factors and, and come to mean lots of things to different people, multifunctional, in other words. Another concept that we work with is um, working vernacular. And I think we all understand what the term vernacular would mean. Vernacular means that something that's built and of the place itself. But the, other, the thing that has happened over the last hundred years is that, in fact, all our houses are becoming to look the same. And this is a result of a lot of, a lot of factors, construction factors, that sort of thing. So in fact, the domestic vernacular is very similar across North America. And that's why I, I like to talk about the vernacular as a kind of working vernacular, 
that the vernacular that we're interested in as architects and we're interested in reinforcing is an idea that can be found in the way that people build the, in the places that they work. The garages, the barns, the fishing sheds, those kinds of places are actually no, not easily um, coerced into a kind of international or no, North American style of building. So that's where we look for a lot of our, of our interest in the way of doing things. Um, So those are, the, those, are the, those, are the, those are the things that attract me to rural communities and attract, attract my students in terms of ways of working on these things. Uh, and so that's the, the principles that we work with. And so some of the things that we work with in terms of what we do is we actually um, try and work in innovative ways with construction. After all, the the main purpose or main, um, one of the intentions that we're working with is actually educating architectural students. So we spend a lot of time uh, actually getting our students to handle real materials and to do real building projects. But the other important aspect of what we do is we try and make sure that these projects themselves are reflective of the working vernacular of the area, but are also innovative. So for instance, here you see a building that's being built by my students, it took us about a month to build this and about $35,000. And we were able to build this with the support of SHRC through a research creation grant. But the important thing here is that we're tying this into the kind of local greenhouses, in this case in the Annapolis Valley. We're look at looking at the ways that they're building things and we're trying to figure out ways that we can actually innovate within this area. So we've got a, 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 sh a grid, a, lamella shell structure here where all the members are the same. We're running this out of our computer labs in the school where we're actually creating these pieces in highly precise ways so that the, the form is actually created by this three and a half foot long member and the form is then generated and so the students understand how to work with the machi machinery, how to assemble the, the buildings and in this case we add this building to the local uh, theater camp in, in the Annapolis Valley. So in the process of teaching our students how to work and how to innovate and how to pick up from the lo local working vernacular, we're trying to create a kind of infrastructure that, that supports the theatrical activities. Um, so this, is, this was a need that they had for an outdoor dining, for dining, which is something that they're building it already uh, had given over much space too, so we created this outdoor space for them to do dining in. Um, so like I said, the, the uh, small towns I think are um, a natural location of, of a lot of this kind of activity. So here, here my students are actually working on another pro project, here, this one in Shetty Camp. Uh, and here we're picking up on the local working vernacular of the way that that they pick up um, and put their ships up for the winter time, their boats up for the winter time, and the kind of offhand construction that they're, that they're making to create these things together. Um, there are many examples from around the world. Uh, one that I'd like to point you to uh, is the rural studio in western Alabama, where they actually turn, use uh, architectural students to work in a very poor area of western Alabama. And this is one of about 80 projects that this studio has turned out, all relatively small projects that actually act as infrastructure for the local community. So they've, they've taken this, they've gotten into to much more uh, socially uh, important work in terms of actually building housing in this, in this area as well. But the real point for for the, the actual education is to, to, to kind of improve this kind of idea of innovation and small building in this area. So this, um, I, 